Hashmap Megabytes. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hashmap Megabytes. Today, we are going to discuss how to budget your Snowflake accounts with resource monitors. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is log into Snowflake. And we are going to, real quick, uh, jump up to your uh, overall logged in role, and let's jump to the account admin role. Normally, you don't want to spend too much time in this role because it is very highly privileged. But for today, we are going to need this higher level access. So resource monitors in Snowflake are the way that we're able to budget and control our compute spend. In Snowflake, your storage is often very cheap. It's usually your compute that you want to keep an eye on. You want to control very closely because that's where all the, the expensive operations happen. Uh, so uh, resource monitors allow you to define either at the account level or at the virtual warehouse level uh, a certain budget, a certain threshold where you want certain things to happen if you go above certain amount of credits. Uh, there are two major ways that you can modify and manage your uh, resource monitors. The first way, uh, as, most, as, as with most things in Snowflake, is through the web UI. So if we go to our account, and then we go to uh, resource monitors, we can, we can create a resource monitor here. Uh, and usually I like to use SQL for most things in uh, Snowflake, but I find that creating and managing resource monitors in the UI is actually a little easier uh, and, and justifies maybe getting away from the SQL. So if you wanted to uh, fill some of these values in, you could always show the SQL and, and see what that looks like. But let's start first with some SQL and we'll come back to this because I think it's a little easier to understand all the different options when, when you have them written out here. So I'll copy this and paste it into uh, into a worksheet. So first thing, we're gonna wanna become the account admin at the worksheet level two. Uh, the account admin is the only role that can create a resource monitor. Uh, some things that are high privilege in Snowflake, you can grant to a lower privilege, like viewing account usage. Uh, but the creation of a resource monitor is still something only the account admin can do. But once it's created, you can delegate management of these monitors to lower level roles. So uh, use account admin, and then let's create an actual resource monitor. This first one, uh, we're gonna name it monthly account budget. And monitors uh, can have different levels of frequency. And the one that I see most commonly is the monthly. That's the kind of billing cycle that a lot of people are used to, but this can go down all the way to daily. Uh, uh, but you can have weekly ones as well. It really just depends on what you're trying to do. But monthly is by far the most common that I see. And then you have a couple configurations uh, with a monitor. This first one, this is probably the most important to pay attention to is your credit quota. This is the number of credits that we consider to be the top of the budget. So for this specific instance, I'm gonna say 200 credits, uh, which isn't a ton, but it's a nice amount of spend. That's where I want things to start cutting off. At, at 200 credits, I don't wanna go any further every month. Uh, and at the beginning of a new month, uh, it'll reset this value. So I don't have to keep coming in and uh, updating this. Uh, the frequency, I'm gonna set to monthly, but you could modify this. And the start timestamp, I'm gonna use immediately. Uh, this is a seldom used uh, configuration for monthly that you could potentially, if you had for some reason needed to start your billing at the middle of the month, you could set this to the 15th. And then every calendar month, uh, it, it would reset kind of at that level. But I really don't see that a lot. You might wanna keep this uh, just un unchanged. Actually, if, if I remove these, I would get the same behavior, but I, I did wanna be explicit. So this is how we set up the standard definition of the resource monitor. If I've, and if I just stopped here, nothing would really happen. We need what we call triggers, which are behavior, uh, things that happen when certain thresholds on that quota have been met. And there are three kinds of triggers. You have a notify trigger, a suspend, and a suspend immediate. The notify is just like it sounds like. Uh, when a certain threshold has been met, and it's based on a percentage of your overall quota, so at the 50 percentile uh, mark, I will be notified when I've used 100 credits across the whole account. Um, that is just a simple, either a pop-up in the notifications area or an email, depending on your settings. Uh, it's important to note, though, that you have to turn on your notifications, and that cannot be done with SQL. It's one of only a few things that has to be done in the UI. I'll cover that here. Uh, but this is defining what will happen at the 50, 75, and 90 percentile. Um, you don't have to use all of these. You don't even have to use any of them. Uh, but I like to have, you know, at 50, it tells me, it gives me a good amount of lead time that if I'm at the halfway point or further in the month, I'm probably fine. But if it's earlier, if it's only a week in the month and I've hit 50%, then I might need to start planning for additional usage this month. Same at 75 and then 90, that's usually telling me I've got a day or two um, 
until I hit a threshold. And, and I'm gonna have to start actually modifying things. Uh, so the next uh, kind of trigger is suspend. Suspend will stop taking new jobs, but it will continue running your existing work. So if you have a long running job that has already submitted before you hit the 95% in this case, then that will keep running. It'll even go above your 200 quota. Just because you wrote 200 up here doesn't mean that it'll hard stop that. Uh, so suspend is a good thing to have in. It's a little more elegant because it won't cut jobs in half as they're running, uh, but it's not enough if you really wanna be sure that you don't go above. For that, you need suspend immediate. This will actually kill ongoing jobs. It'll shut everything down, and it is your most uh, aggressive form of budget enforcement. Uh, I set this at 99% because it is possible, depending on how much work you have going on, that you could overrun your budget by just, just a few credits, just a little bit, um, even with a suspend immediate. So 200 credits, I'm not that worried about it. I'll give it a little buffer by saying 99% is where I want to cut things off. If you're not that worried about hitting this and, and you'd want to give plenty of time for the suspend to kick in at your 200, uh, you can go ahead and set this higher than uh, 100%. So if I go 10% above my quota, uh, that'd be 220, uh, then go ahead and shut everything off, get really aggressive. But for me, I like to do that here at the, the 99. But you can give yourself the mix that's right for you. So let's go ahead and use the account admin. Uh, and now we can create this uh, this resource monitor, but just right now, it's not assigned to anything. We just created this abstract monitor that has a nice name that we can identify it by, but it won't enforce anything. It's not assigned to either a virtual warehouse or the account. So we will now alter the account and set the resource monitor for this account to the monthly account budget. And that means that we're only gonna be able to set one. This is a one-to-one -one value. So we couldn't have multiple uh, monitors happening at the same time. You really wanna configure that with just one at the whole account level. For finer granularity control, uh, we can go to the uh, the warehouse level monitor. So it's the same syntax down here. Uh, create uh, Use role account admin. Uh, and then we create warehouse. I'm gonna call this the monthly demo warehouse budget. Again, it's gonna be at the monthly level, but it's gonna have a much lower threshold. This is gonna be a 20 credit uh, quota. And I don't really need to be notified as often because this is a smaller chunk of my uh, instance of my environment. The demo warehouse, uh, a good example of why you might want to have a budget on a warehouse like this that, it, that is in addition to your overall account level budget. I often have warehouses that power external facing uh, visualizations. So anyone with the URL can trigger that visualization to run. And if I don't put a tight threshold on it, it's possible someone could go and just reload that visualization and just burn through credits. Uh, and even though I have this 200 protecting me from total ruin, I don't want it to eat up the whole account budget for that month. So I set this pretty low. Uh, and I give it not as big a buffer because this is a slow level. The suspend immediate, just when it hits 100, we're done. Um, I don't want people to be interrupted midway, so I drop the suspend a little lower to give it um, uh, a 5% buffer where it can end kind of elegantly, and then an 80% notify because I don't need to know over the course of the month. Just once I hit 80%, I can decide, maybe I go in here and bump this up to like 30, if I know I had a heavy demo month, or I just leave it be, and uh, maybe I take down the URL, the URL for a while. So let's create this, uh, it's really similar. And then instead of altering the account, I'm gonna alter the warehouse. Uh, and then demo warehouse is something that you may already have in here a lot of the fresh uh, snowflake instances have this warehouse and if you don't just assign it to one of your warehouses or when you create a warehouse you can actually assign the resource monitor at creation time as well and uh, that's that's how we'll set this interestingly your uh, resource monitors that apply to warehouses they can apply to multiple warehouses so if I wanted to use the load warehouse um, and, and assign it here I can, so now both of these are under the same uh, budget, this resource monitor, which is not a great name for that, so I won't, I won't keep this in practice, but if I had, for example, four or five different Tableau warehouses that power my different production Tableau connections, I might have the monthly Tableau budget that applies to all four or five of those warehouses. So this is how you would set these up in SQL. Let's go into our account, and in the resource monitors, might have to reload here. Well, we should be able to see the monitors that we just created. Great, so we have both of these right here. 
expend this out. This is the account budget and the demo warehouse budget. This will give me some percentage over time of how much has been used. I can click on it and edit it if I need to. Uh, and you just modify the SQL. It's really similar to the SQL just right here. And it tells you the, the schedule. We can customize this. Uh, and here are all the different kind of options for that. Okay, so uh, showing the SQL, this shows the SQL that uh, would be used to create this. And it includes the alter account command. So that's really useful if you just want to get in here, fill out the UI, and then run this command yourself, and then keep that in version control. Um, that's, that's smart. But this doesn't give us uh, any notif notifications yet. So to actually get notified when something happens, go up to notifications, and then go to settings. Uh, luckily, there are only just a few things in the UI settings because most things are SQL driven. Uh, we'll go to notifications and I'll do all uh, right here. And well, okay, so I'll just do web. Uh, otherwise, I would enter my email address and now I'll get notifications. Uh, that's everything you need to start monitoring your Snowflake usage and to cut things off before they get drastically over overrun. Uh, you don't want that surprise bill at the end of the month. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more HashMap Megabytes content. HashMap Megabytes.